Welcome back. Our mortgage expert, Debbie Thomas, joins us today. And this is something new. We're taking calls and emails, and we have lots. So let's get right to it. All right. Shafe is our first caller from Delta. Hi, Shafe. Hi, how are you? Good. What's your question Good, for Debbie? i got Debbie? a quick question about mortgage hibernation. Uh, we're living in a current home, and we're looking at buying a house that's currently under construction. It's about six months away from uh, completion. Um, so there might be about a three-month gap. With the, is it popular for banks to hibernate a mortgage between um, that gap period? Sure. It's also known just basically as porting your mortgage. So once you pay the mortgage out with your existing uh, lender, you're going to have to pay the penalty or the prepayment penalty. But then when you lock in or move that mortgage to the new property, they will reimburse you for that penalty. So it, each lender pay, you know, has a different range, so it would be anywhere from 30 days up to 120 days. So as long as you can complete that transition in, in that time frame, you should be fine. All right. Um, this is a good email from Paul Leslie. We're looking at selling a quarter ownership of our house to a family member. We presently have a mortgage on the house. So can this be done and what is the best way? Uh, that's a little bit uh, more difficult okay. because basically the bottom line is if you have that, if that mortgage goes into foreclosure, the lender can't necessarily foreclose on that entire home because they've only got quarter ownership. Mm -hmm. So it's really difficult to get a mortgage for a quarter ownership of a property. Okay. So best not to leave it. Okay. Yep. Let's go to Brian in Vancouver. Hi, Brian. Hi. What's your question? Uh, what's a blended mortgage? A blended mortgage, oftentimes, let's say you've got a certain amount of money in a mortgage today and you want more. So they take the, day, they take the rate that you have in today's mortgage and let's say you want to increase by 100000 they would give you the new mortgage at today's rates. They would blend the old rate and the new rate. That's what a blended mortgage is. And in this climate, would you suggest that right now? Oh, sure. Because the rates are very low. A blended mortgage uh, prevents you from having to pay any penalty. Okay. Yeah. Um, Laura is sent us an email saying we're in the process of getting a new mortgage, a home equity line of credit, and in order to do so, uh, a bank insists they must pay off the lease of their vehicle. They have three payments left on that vehicle for a total of, of about $2,200. They would rather pay that off themselves so they don't have to pay for it for years and years to come. What do you recommend? Well, basically, it's all about qualifying for that mortgage. Right. It's all about the fact that that lease payment is probably taking up a big chunk of their, of their monthly income. Right. But there are a lot of lenders out there that if you can get proof that that lease is going to be done in two, three, or four months down the road, they won't include it in that debt servicing. So if you're with one lender that is asking you to pay that lease out, it might be an idea to shop to another lender that uh, gives they you the They want option. your business. So if That's you right. tell them you're going somewhere else, they may change That's right. what they say. Okay, mm -hmm. let's try and get Stephen from Langley. Hi, Steve. Hi. Um, my question is, um, we're in a five-year uh, fixed-rate mortgage, and we're trying to renegotiate with the bank to get a lower interest rate. Is it worth it to do that at this point in time? couple questions. Do you stay on the line? Um, it, it's really, it really comes down to the math. So what you need to do is you need to give me your outstanding balance. You need to give me the penalty that they're going to charge and the number of months left in your term. If you can get that information to me, I can run the numbers and we can determine whether it's in your best interest to pay that out. Okay, so we will give you her number in just two seconds. Let's answer this quickly, if I can, from Brad. If I buy my first house with cash, do I still qualify for a first-time home buyer's benefits if I buy my second house with a mortgage? I wish I had Brad's problem. Um, the, is he referring to the RSP? I think is, is it his first time. His, fir, his first, time. first time home buyer's benefits. You know, you get exemption. You yeah. Have, no. In order to get that exempt, you have ne you have had to not own an owner occupied home anywhere in the world before. Doesn't matter how he pays for That's it. That's correct. That's correct. I'm guessing Brad may be able to afford it if he pays for it with cash. All right, Debbie, thank you so much. You're that welcome. worked out well. We'll do that again. Great. All right, so if you have any questions for Debbie, and uh, Steve, call Debbie and or um, email her, and she'll help you out on your question. Info at mortgagegroupgrp.com or www.mortgagegroupgrp.com uh, to get in touch with Debbie. Thanks a lot.